In the last week, I introduced the row reduction algorithm for matrices. This algorithm was a way to solve linear systems. This week, I want to demonstrate several other uses of the row reduction algorithm. In this course, it solves many problems for us. Since it can solve any linear system, it can approach any problem which is equivalent to a linear system. Most of the problems I've presented so far are equivalent to linear systems, though sometimes that is not necessarily easy to see. By this logic, I'm going to use the row reduction algorithm for several different calculations. In this first video, I'll start with dimensions of spans. Before starting, let me remind you of the definition of rank of a matrix. The rank is the number of leading ones in the reduced row echelon form. All right, say you have a span of some number of vectors. A span is all linear, possible linear combinations of the vectors. So here, everything you can get to from the origin by taking any multiples of the vectors v1 up to vk and then adding them all together. What I want to know in this video, what is the dimension of this span? Spans are built up from nothing. By adding directions, I give more and more possibilities and thus the span can grow in dimension. However, as I mentioned in the past, some vectors might be redundant. They may be unnecessary to the span. The dimension of the span is the minimum number of vectors needed to produce the span. How do I calculate this? How do I check for these redundancies? Well, this is the algorithm. I take the spanning vectors and I input them as rows in a matrix. Be careful. Even though the vectors here are written in columns, they need to be switched and inputted as rows, not as columns into a matrix. Then I row reduce. The rank of the resulting matrix, the number of leading ones, will be the dimension of the span. And it will also tell me which vectors from the original set were redundant. Each row that turns into a row of all zeros came from a redundant vector. And that's it. I just need to row reduce and count. Since the row reductions can be done by computer, this is a pretty efficient thing to do. One note about identifying the redundant vectors. If any rows are switched during the process, I have to keep track of that. If a computer did the row reduction, I don't necessarily know if it switched any rows. Therefore, I might have to recheck the vectors I end up with to make sure there are no redundancies left. Let me show some examples. Here is a span of three vectors in R3. I put the vectors into a matrix as rows. The first row is the first vector, 5, negative 1, 0. The second row is the second vector, negative 1, 6, 4. And the third row is the third vector, 3, 4, 1. Then I row reduce. I did all the row reductions for this video and for all my videos and notes from now on in the course on Wolfram Alpha. This row, row reduces to the identity matrix with three leading ones. Therefore, there is nothing redundant here, and the dimension of the span is three. Since this is R3, the span must be the entire space R3. And I can conclude from this that the three vectors here are linearly independent, and that they form a basis for R3. Here's a second example. Again, three vectors in R3. I put them into a matrix as rows and I row reduce by computer. I get two leading ones. So there is one redundancy. I only need the first two vectors. The third is redundant. Note again, I don't know if the computer did any row exchanges. So behind the scenes, I ran the row reduction again using only the first two vectors and I still got two leading ones from those. So I do know that those first two are linearly independent and I can use them to describe the span. This span is a plane in R3, a plane through the origin. It is not the whole space because it has dimension two, only two vectors are needed. That describes a plane. Note also that with three vectors, no one vector is a multiple of any other vector. For two vectors, linear independence is purely an issue of whether the vectors are multiples of each other or not. For three or more vectors, Recognizing linear independence on site is very difficult, making this algorithm all the more valuable. Now I can think of higher dimensions as well. Here's the span of six vectors in R6. Are any of these redundant? 
what is the dimension of this span? It could be all of our six, since there are six vectors, but it might be quite a bit smaller. I'll take all these six vectors and put them into matrix as rows. So here is the matrix I get with the previous spanning vectors as rows. This is a six by six matrix, and I asked the computer to row reduce it. Here is the row reduced form. I have three leading ones. So the dimension of the span is three. These were three leading ones and three rows without leading ones. That means that three vectors in the original span were redundant. The first three rows have leading ones, so as long as the computer didn't rearrange rows, the first three vectors form a linearly independent set, and I can write the original span of six vectors as a span of just three. These three are a basis for the span, since they are linearly independent. Again, since I don't know if the computer exchanged rows, I did a double check behind the scenes that these three are in fact linearly independent. If I put these into a matrix as rows and row reduce, I still get three leading ones, so I know that these three are in fact independent. This span is a three space in R6. R6 has room for lines, planes, and infinite flat three spaces, four spaces, and five spaces. I can't visualize those things, of course, but the algebra lets me recognize that this is a three space in R6. Let me recap. There are many ideas that fit together really nicely here, so I want to make the connections explicit. Here is a span. The row reduction algorithm, by way of leading ones or their lack, showed which vectors are redundant. I can re remove those redundancies to make a more efficient span. After removing redundancies, the resulting vectors are a basis for the span. That is, they are linearly independent. To be a basis for a span is to be linearly independent and cover the whole span. Therefore, checking for the dimension of a span and checking if a set of vectors is linearly independent is the same thing. Row reduce and look for leading ones. The leading ones indicate which vectors form an independent set which vectors form a basis, and the dimension of the span that those vectors form. It's all the same question, the same algorithm. Finally, all of this works for an offset span as well by simply ignoring the offset. The offset doesn't change dimension at all, doesn't change basis, doesn't change linearly, linear independence of the vectors. It's just a shift, moving the span some distance in some direction. Nothing about the algorithm changes for an offset span, and the offset itself is never part of the matrix or the row reduction.